Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And looking at the recruits that we have from last week's visit, Caden Joseph commits to our team. So our top prospect, I'd say he's probably our top prospect, mainly because we need a quarterback and because we need somebody in the future. I mean, we don't have anybody right now. We do have Albert Vick. I actually want to pull up Albert, Albert Vick next. We'll go to him next. But it's going to be between Albert Vick and Caden Joseph, it looks like, for next year. And we also have Patrick Williams on the board as well. We don't know if we're going to get him, though, because it looks like this is probably going to go into the offseason. And I don't know if I want to commit so many points after having two guys ready to start right now. I don't know if I'm going to put a lot of points on him in the offseason. But it's also a good sign as well. Look at the visit Rafael Wheeler had. So we actually jump up 1,300 and steal the lead away from Washington. The only thing I'm worried about is that I do hope that this goes into the offseason as well. I think I'll put the I'll close be close to putting the house on him. I'm not sure exactly. But I'm going to put a lot of points on him in the offseason if it does go into the offseason. Because look, I mean, we need a tackle. I mean, we that's our weak point at the at this point in this dynasty we don't have good offensive linemen and it's kind of hindered Alex Brown a little bit you see his numbers are down this season but this would instantly help us 87 pass block 76 run block 83 impact block but we did steal a lead so hopefully they do have a visit in week 14 he has a week visit 14 week 14 visit with Washington but I mean I hope that we can steal it away at least carry it into the offseason but we'll see so here is Albert Vick. This was the guy I was talking about. We did retro him last year. We got him, recruited him last year. 79 speeds, 82 excel, but he has 81 throw power and 73 accuracy. So even after training, Caden Joseph is still going to be more accurate. He's going to have 86 accuracy, but throw power is definitely going to be Albert Vick's strong suit over Caden Joseph and his speed, obviously. So he's, he's mobile and he's taller, 6'7 to 5'11. I mean, that's such a big height difference. That's a whole eight inches. I don't know if Caden Joseph is going to be able to make the throws because a lot of his balls might get tipped at the line. We'll see. That happens a lot with Brad Berry, actually. And how tall is Brad Berry? Brad Berry's 5'11", too. So we can see now like how it's going to be if we do have Caden Joseph at quarterback. And Ashton Cohen is actually ready to go in this game, but I don't think I'm going to play him, mainly because I want to keep him healthy. And Brad Berry's actually been playing really well the last couple games. Remember two games ago? He had that incredible game. So if we look at the injury report, I think Ashton Cohen's ready. He's okay. So he's questionable for this game. I'm not going to play him at all. I think I'm going to have him back for next week's game versus uh, Oklahoma. But if you're looking at this Houston game, I mean, they, you know they're going to have a top offense. But surprisingly, look, they have a good rush offense. And they're usually in the middle of the pack and rush offense. But it looks like they're in the top third in the NCAA. They have uh, the number 29 rush offense. But Kirk Herbstreit's coming with us, because mainly probably because we're at home. And look at Houston's conference record. They're 1-5. And, and, I mean, I don't know. Let's just look at who they've been playing. So they've lost a couple of high-scoring games. Iowa State they lost to. And Iowa State, look at Iowa State. They are 6-3. and three. They are definitely probably the surprise of our conference so far at 6-3. and three. Uh, They lost to Baylor. That was a bad loss, 3-6. and six. So... I mean, we're going to have our work cut out mainly because we our defense has kind of had a problem with stopping offenses last week. I mean, Kansas ran all over us, but it looks like they are missing a quarterback. Uh, King, it looks like. So let's look at their leaders here. So King is going to be out for four weeks. So he's their leading uh, passer. So let's just look at who is going to be their starter now. So what a big loss this is. Derek King, look at this guy. He is 95 acceleration, 85 speed at quarterback, 89 awareness. I mean, look at this guy. This guy is a stud. 82 throw power, but 87 accuracy. So I can't lie. I'm kind of glad he's out. So they're going to have to go with the sophomore, Ty Smith. And this guy can run as well. He's got 85 speed, 81 excel. He's got better throwing stats. 85 throw power, 85 accuracy. But he's got 91 elusiveness. So he's going to be a true dual threat. I don't know how they're losing these games with this good a quarterback. It looks like he's thrown five touchdowns three interceptions this season and he's kind of at a 50 percent completion percentage rate but i mean it's definitely somebody that we're gonna have to look out for especially running the ball because they could probably run some option because he can move and he's big 6'3 227 so it's gonna be a tough matchup for us even though they're struggling in conference we're definitely gonna have to do some work here so let's hop into it 
one more game until that epic matchup versus Oklahoma so we just got to get through this one and this is a familiar foe in Houston remember they were in the same conference as this last season so they're going to be looking for revenge because remember last season we straight destroyed them so they're definitely going to be looking to get some revenge so here we go starting out the first quarter Carr is going to get the ball this time on a pass for a nice 25 yard reception and Smith gotcha, we know bitch. he can run the ball but this time we send the blitz on the third down Paul Miller gets around the corner with that 95 speed and he comes in from the safety position getting the sack so starting on my next drive Jimmy Ward gets the catch out of the backfield but facing a first and 10 Alex Brown gets the ball up the middle but this one's gonna be loose on the ground and Carper is gonna pick this one up and run in for the touchdown and man disaster strikes already Alex Brown coughs it up and it, this is going to be a 7-0 lead for Houston early in this game off the turnover and here they're showing more defense this time tripping up Bradbury on that one so facing a third and nine finding Kevin Oliver over the middle but he fumbles too and we cough up the ball in two turnovers early but we do get the play reverse we challenge that one so luckily we keep this drive alive so facing a second and six this time Christopher Rubright getting the reception that time so facing another second and ten later on this drive this time Herman Rogers is gonna get the catch over the middle taking a big hit on that one so facing a first and 10 inside the 30 yard line, we're moving the ball pretty well, but Brad Berry overthrows a receiver, probably a bad read on that one. And the defender makes a nice play coming off of the receiver, picking up the slant route. And that's gonna be two turnovers early on in this game for this Marquette offense. But we gotta stop this offense. I mean, Smith, you know he can run. We know he can pass. But facing a third and 12, getting it to Carr on the screen pass. And this time, Lewis Parker gets to him. So they decide to kick a field goal. And that is probably the worst field goal kick I've ever seen. That was wide, 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 wide right. So now we take back over a minute and a half left in this first quarter. And we just need to you know keep the ball in our hands because we're turning the ball over a little bit too much so we're giving the ball to Alex Brown and he costs it up one more time for the second time this quarter second time this quarter he's coughed the ball up and that is gonna be another turnover for this Houston defense Bruh. and once again they come back out and Josh Dunbar just gets straight armed on that one so now facing a third and five now inside of our territory smith is gonna roll out and get the first down so now they're inside the 10 yard line on a first and goal smith is gonna roll out to the left but this time he's gotcha, gonna bitch. get swallowed up this time by dylan mack on the outside so facing a third and goal near the goal line giving it to car this time car almost breaks through but the defense is there led by LaRue Wiley and they settle for the field goal but look at this on the last drive Brad Berry sprained his ankle and look he's out two weeks so that means that Joshua Rich gets his opportunity to get in the game remember we tried this last year we had Joshua Rich not last year but earlier in the season we tried Joshua Rich as the back of quarterback and he was just terribly inaccurate. So I'm just remembering that up to this point. I'm getting them all easy throws, getting Alex Brown involved because I don't know if I fully trust Joshua Rich throwing the ball, but he's doing a good job leading this offense down the field on his initial drive and he caps it off by giving it to Jimmy Ward for the touchdown up the middle and we're finally on the boards. It's a three point lead almost to halftime now. So Smith, Comes back out, leads this Houston D offense gotcha, back out, but we do get in for the sack. So facing a third and 11, three and a half minutes left in the first half. Smith is going to throw out to the right side, but Cohen is going to be there for the tip, and we are going to force another punt here, and our defense is actually keeping us in this game. We've had a lot of turnovers, and speaking of turnovers, another one I mean that was just a bad throw that time by Joshua Rich 
So much open field. Look at that open field to throw to Herman Rogers, and look where he throws the ball. Not even close to Herman Rogers. So another turnover in this game, and this is this is getting ridiculous because we're just giving them the ball. It's only a three-point lead, luckily, but our defense just continues to ball out and keeps the offense in the game. So now a minute 15 left in the half. We're at least just trying to get a field goal on the board, not to take too many risky throws because we know we're already turnover prone in this game. Houston has definitely turned it up a notch. So 50 seconds left in this game. Joshua Rich is going to roll out right this time taking a big sack so 50 seconds left in this half but we do actually get them to punt the ball one more time so 12 seconds left we got the ball at about the 45 yard line after a decent return by chad ball but joshua rich once again makes a horrible throw and turns the ball over before half so i'd go to desperate measures ashton cohen is hurt but i know he's capable of suiting up this game he suited up and he was kind of the emergency quarterback, but look at this, man. Comes in, and he gets sacked right away. So, Ashton Cohen, I mean, didn't even get a first down on his first game back in a few games. So, here we go. Back out on defense, but, I mean, our defense is balling out up to this point, keeping us in this game. So, we honestly just need to get Cohen comfortable because this is his first game back let alone he's coming in in a pressure situation where he's been turned the ball over and he does not do anything differently i mean i don't know what the problem is ashton cohen comes in throws another interception that one wasn't even close that was supposed to be to eddie mccray the linebacker that was guarding uh i don't even know who that was on the short route there he makes a play on the ball and look at that we give houston more good field position and with this type of field position they gotta capitalize so here is smith finding his receiver stevenson on that one for the 16 yard reception so facing a first and goal smith is gonna find an open lane cut to the inside and he's gonna get in for the touchdown and now it's a 10 point lead for, for the houston cougars and i mean we still got plenty of time left we're only down 10 three and a half minutes left in the third quarter i mean we got plenty of time so here is kevin oliver getting the reception on that one so facing a first and ten cohen is gonna drop back find herman rogers across the field in enemy territory close to the, about the 38 yard line so facing a first and ten inside the 30 yard line rube Wright is gonna get the ball that time on the play action and we're gonna get it within field goal range so facing a third and six christopher rubri getting the ball one more time but this time it's stripped once again and that is seven count them seven turnovers in this game i don't know what's going on houston is just going after the ball in this one this time another strip and i mean come on i mean we cannot gotcha, catch bitch. a break in this game but luckily our defense is keeping us in this game with the sack that time by hunter greggs so facing another third and eight smith is going to throw the ball deep but josh dunbar is going to be there for the deflection so now they have to put it away and you know chad ball is always a threat to return this one and he has an open lane to the outside cuts inside but takes a huge hit and he's gonna cough it up so that is eight count them eight turnovers in this game and we cannot catch a break we can't do anything i mean damned if we do dan if we don't if we run the ball it's a fumble if we pass the ball it's an interception even on special teams we're fumbling i mean it, this is just an all-around ugly game for the marquette golden eagles and we still find a way to be down by just two scores coughing the ball up eight times so now we are getting towards the fourth quarter and with that run it does take us to the fourth quarter so on a third and 13 they're in our own territory close to the 30 yard line we do stop car on the screen pass but they do kick the long field goal but this one is gonna be through and i mean we're still down by 13 still I mean, a manageable lead. We can still catch up. 
but we need some miracles. We need, we just need help. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the problem is this game, but our whole team is just out of whack. Turn the ball over at any opportunity we can get. But here's Ashton Cohen. We know he's a senior. He can lead us. If anybody can lead us, it's got to be him. So now facing a third and 10, Ashton Cohen's going to throw the ball deep. <sighs> you guys know the deal. Another turnover, and that is our ninth turnover. I mean, a school record turnover in this game. I mean, nine turnovers. You should never win a game. Turn the ball over nine times, so Houston takes back over, and they, they're they just moving the ball. Now it's starting to look like this game is out of reach because Houston begins to move the ball, but luckily we do stop them, get them to settle for the long field goal, and they do hit it. So now it is about a 16-point lead in this game. I mean, at least we could score twice and get on the board and look at what happens next. Cooley with the deep pattern that time. He runs the fly route. And Jamel Cooley, I mean, he just has a chemistry with Ashton Cohen, and he gets a deep pass. So we do have to go for it on a two-point conversion, but we get stuffed, and that could have made it an eight-point game. But instead, it's a two-score game, and Carr gets the ball, and they just have to run the clock. Remember, I was surprised because they're actually a top-running offense. I thought they would just be top uh, in the pass, but they actually can run the ball. But facing a first and 10, Carr is going to get out past the 40-yard line. So now facing a third and one, two and a half minutes left in this game, and we do get them stopped. So they do have to settle for the long field goal. And this time, their kicker is going to kick it, but it's going to be wide left. So we do ca catch another break. So we're down 10. Two minutes left in the game. The last thing we can do is turn the ball over for our 10th turnover in this game. And Cohen, I mean, he's got to show some senior leadership. Hope we'll lead us back into this game. And here he is finding Herman Rogers across the middle for the 11 yard reception. So facing a first and 10, a minute and a half left in this game. Rolling out right, he's going to find Kevin Oliver. He's going to put on a couple of choke moves. Nice moves on that one by Kevin Oliver getting up to the 10 yard line. So facing a first and 10. This time he's going to throw over the middle, find Chad Ball. And Chad Ball is going to find the end zone on this one. So it is only a three score game. What a miracle it is. So we had to kick the onside kick. No timeouts left, but Stevenson is going to recover this one for Houston. And you would think that would be the end of the game, but they're actually going to run the ball instead of kneeling it a few times. So facing a second and nine, Carr is going to hand the ball off. They're going to get the ball on this one, and he's going to break a couple of tackles and get in for the touchdown. So Houston just rubbing it in our face. But you know what? They left 37 seconds left on this clock. They had to kick the ball deep, and guess who's back there? Chad Ball gets the open lane, and this time he's got one man to beat, and he gets him to dive and miss. And Chad Ball takes this one all the way for the touchdown so this game is not over yet there is still hope so one more chance onside kick but Pettigrew is gonna be there to receive that onside kick and he's gonna fall on the ball and that's gonna take us to the end of the game nine turnovers in this game for the Marquette Golden Eagles I mean you should never ever win a game turn the ball that turn the ball over that many times but we only lose by three points i mean it's a miracle i don't know how we stayed in this game our defense balled out but i mean those fumbles i mean the interceptions i can live with because sometimes you just make a bad throw i mean it was a lot of bad throws in this game but we had four fumbles lost a big one coming on that chad ball return i mean that was a big return that we had some momentum he fumbles Alex Brown fumbles twice one ends up being a scoop and score so without that I mean we could have possibly stopped them and got them to kick a field goal but I mean just too many turnovers and then Rube right in the red zone turns it over so I mean that's a three-point swing right there I mean without those fumbles we probably win this game even with the interceptions if we throw five interceptions 
and maybe lose maybe one of those fumbles, we probably win this game. But I mean, we can, it's just inexcusable. I cannot believe we lost this game. I mean, our conference championship hopes are probably done now. I mean, they're done. So I mean, no, I mean. The only good thing about this game is that we play good defense. I mean, that's the only good thing that came out this game. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. I mean, we got Oklahoma coming up next. I mean, the only thing we can really do at this point is ruin their perfect season. So I guess just stay tuned. We'll bounce back. Oklahoma, big game next week. So let's go.